Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Welcome to AutoLine Daily for March 21st, the spring equinox for those of us north of the equator and the vernal equinox for those of us who live south of it. And now to what's going on in the automotive industry. And boy, the situation in Europe is going from bad to worse. Now, Opel's top labor official is warning General Motors that it better not think about closing any plants. Instead, labor is arguing that Opel should simply sell more cars mainly by exporting them to other markets. Gee, if only it were that easy. Sergio Marchionne says that Europe needs to go through a painful restructuring with lots of plant closings and layoffs. He says the auto industry needs a pan-European solution to overcapacity because individual nations do not have the political will to do it on their own. Here's my Autoline insight. Getting a pan-European solution is a great idea and maybe they'll come up with one in another five years. But all the while, the auto industry will bleed red ink, and GM, for one, cannot wait that long. Instead of pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into Peugeot, GM should have used that money to close a plant. That's what they're going to have to do anyway, so they may as well get started right now. If you're on the waiting list for a Camaro ZL1, better hang on tight. Autoblog reports that production of the 580 horsepower monster was delayed due to an undisclosed quality assessment issue. Several hundred ZL1s have been built so far, but none of them have been released for sale. They're still awaiting repairs back at GM's plant in Oshawa, Ontario. A company spokesman says they're close to getting things sorted out and will have production up and running again in weeks, not months. BMW is taking a fuel economy hit on its new 3 Series. It estimated its 328i models would get 36 miles per gallon on the highway, better than the previous generation 335 diesel. BMW's testing showed that the turbocharged four-cylinder engine and an eight-speed automatic transmission could hit 36 miles per gallon on the highway, but the US EPA said no, it gets 33. The city rating also dropped by one mile per gallon to 23. Despite the drop, the three series fuel economy numbers are still best in class. And you know, this seems to be emerging as some sort of trend. Automakers not hitting their electric range or mileage targets. Remember, the Fisker Karma also fell short of expectations, as did the Chevy Volt and the Nissan Leaf. And here's another reason why the Chinese car market could slow down. The Chinese government is raising the price of fuel in the country. Gasoline will go up by seven cents per liter, while diesel gets an eight cent per liter increase. Before this increase, gasoline cost around a dollar a liter, or about four bucks per gallon. Even though the U.S. unemployment rate is still remains at its highest level in nearly 30 years, trucking companies are having a hard time finding enough qualified drivers. According to Bloomberg, Companies need to offer higher pay and other benefits because workers are moving to other industries like construction where they can make a similar salary and do not have to be out on the road for days on end. New regulations are also limiting the number of qualified drivers and as we reported the other day, this is also contributing to the shortage of trucks that haul cars to dealerships. And boy, that could be a real problem for the industry. Anyway, coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Why? Higher take rates, lower cost of ownership, longer range and better fuel mileage, lower CO2 emissions. Clean diesel, good, economical, functional. Bosch, invented for life. And now it's time for some of your feedback. Chuck Grenchy saw our report on the new Azera in which we said that Hyundai claims it's best in class. Hey, help an old guy out, he says. What class is this thing in and what other vehicles reside in this class? Chuck, that's a good question. 
I think the industry would classify the Azera as an upper mid-size car, but it certainly competes against cars such as the Toyota Avalon and the Buick LaCrosse. ERM E03 says, I love the show, but lately they've been talking about Kia, GM, and Mazda like there's nothing else going on with the other automakers. And Mark wonders too, John, what is it with your guys and the Mazda CX-5? This is the third glowing segment on the car. <laughs> well, you guys, it's all about the latest new car launches that we've been to. You watch, in a couple of weeks, everyone's going to be complaining about all the coverage we devote to the Acura ILX, the Ford Escape, and the Dodge Dart. Pedro Fernandez wants to know, do you feel the new trend for bigger tires and wheels is worth it when you consider how much more expensive these 16 and 17 inch tires cost, even for economy cars? It's all about the look, Pedro. From a ride and handling standpoint, these bigger wheels often add so much unsprung weight that they're not worth it for everyday driving, but they sure look better and they can actually help sell a car when it comes time to get a new one. 2003 SCT saw our report that Nissan was going to give star quarterback Peyton Manning a Titan pickup truck if he signed with the Tennessee Titans. Well, that's one way that Nissan can get rid of Nissan Titans, LOL. Yeah, you know, he's right. They have been rather slow sellers. And SeaTech says, since Manning is going to the Broncos, will Ford be willing to build him an SUV? Well, since Ford no longer makes the Bronco, maybe Chevrolet should give him a Colorado pickup truck. And Chuck wants to know, does the European market have a number similar to our SAR number? You know, that's a great question. I have never seen a seasonally adjusted annual rate for Europe or heard anyone talk about it. In fact, I don't know any other market in the world where sales data is as complete and as quickly available as it is in the US. For example, I'd love to get a breakout of hybrid sales in Europe or Japan. So if anyone out there knows where I can get my mitts on that data, let me know. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments and keep them coming. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.